here we are in the Chester Beatty in Dublin Castle. It's a remarkable museum and library set up by a man called Chester Beatty. It's eponymous. Uh, he really was uh, born in America, but we think of him as Irish because two of his grandparents were actually Irish. He had a lifelong interest in things Chinese. The Chinese collection here is quite remarkable. It's outstanding worldwide. Some of the material isn't really to be found anywhere else in the world, well, outside China. I'm Brian O'Neill. I'm a tour guide here in the Chester Beatty. I've been at this for many years. And now that this is the, uh, the year of the rat, which comes around every 12 years, it's probably my last year of the rat, but we, we'll see in any case. I've always loved the collection. In, even years ago, it used to be out in, in Bolt's Bridge. Moved here in the year 2000, and obviously this is a much better site for the collection. Only a very small proportion of the collection is on exhibition at any one time, maybe only about 1%. Chester Beatty collected stuff that he, he liked, and some people would argue that the collection is unbalanced. And of course it is, it's just one man going out, buying stuff. Admittedly, he had teams of people working for him around the world. He died in 1968. The thing I find encouraging about Beatty is that uh, he actually changed his whole career and his whole life when he came to Ireland at the age of 75. Well, what we're looking at here is a wonderful example of an imperial Chinese robe from the Chinese uh, royal household. This robe, uh, because of its color, uh, it would have been worn probably by the wife of the crown prince. So this is a lady's robe. Now on the robe, we have a huge amount of symbolism. On the shoulders, there's the sun on that side, and the moon on that side. There's a little constellation representing the stars. The earth is represented by this mountain here. This is a mountain, Mount Meru. It's a mythical mountain at the center of the world. The Chinese empire at that time consisted of a huge square of land surrounded by four oceans. This, of course, is in myth. But here's an ocean, here's waves breaking, and there's the Mount Meru. Now, there are nine dragons, and these dragons, they're very posh dragons. They're all imperial dragons. And I know that because they've got five claws. Dragons have a class system, just like us. Five claws, imperial, four claws, probably upper servants, and three claws, just ordinary blue-collar dragons that you, you wouldn't probably say hello to. It takes up to three years to make one of these, so if you want to get one, you need to put your order in fairly soon. Now, we're looking here at the Yongluo Emperor, my favorite Chinese emperor. He reigned uh, from about 1402 for only about 20 years, and he achieved a huge amount in a few years of reign. But his greatest achievement, as far as I'm concerned, was he said to his courtiers, I want everything we know in China written down. And they said, oh no, anyway, that will take years. So they went off and it took them a total of seven years. And he said, yeah, this is great. I'm going to call it after myself. So it becomes the Young Law de Dian, or the Young Law Encyclopedia. But the second edition from the 16th century, uh, we have three volumes of it, of about 400 remaining worldwide. Now we're looking here at some jade books. He collected jade because I think one of the things was, don't forget, he worked in mining. He liked minerals. He liked things like diamonds. And these jade books are incredibly difficult to produce. It takes uh, perhaps a year to produce each page. And the script, incredibly enough, the actual script is done in the hand of the Qinlong Emperor uh, of the time. He wrote the characters out in uh, his own hand on paper and then that was transferred to jade by his helpers. Jade itself has been revered for millennia. Um, jade is good for your health, it's good for your uh, mental health, it's good for your garden. In this case, it makes the emperor's words immortal because they're written on a substance that won't deteriorate. We're looking here at a very small selection of Chester Beatty's enormous collection of snuff bottles, perhaps numbering over a thousand. These beautiful items are needed because the tropical climate is, is damp and your snuff is going to get damp and, and wet. So you need a, a bottle. They're rather like uh, earlier medicine bottles, but there's a tiny spoon attached to the stopper. Take the stopper out, a little spoonful of snuff, and off you go. This collection is open pretty much throughout the year. If you want a curatorial tour, you can ring up and, and book. There's a cost involved in that. but for uh, normal tour guides like me, the tours are free. We have a mixture of people from all around the world, lots of Chinese people. 40,000 Chinese people visited Ireland in 2015. We don't have figures since, but I imagine that figure has gone way up. About one in 300 Irish people is of Chinese descent. 
and uh, I think promoting understanding between people of different cultures is a very positive way forward.